uh, let's move on to our program. So, Josh, is this your, you've got one more introduction after this, don't you? Yeah, one more after this week. Yeah. Uh, and then it's uh, Janet, or we'll be handing over those du duties to Janet. But uh, so this week, uh, we have our club's very own Sharon Olmsted um, giving us an update from the scholarship committee and uh, sharing a, a little bit more about our recipients for this year. And I'll, I'll hand it over to Sharon. Thank you, Josh. All right, everyone. So um, this year's Rotary scholarships looked a lot different than in the years past. Um, and a large part of that was obviously when we were getting the applications out to students um, and having them fulfill their applications, they weren't able to do that um, in person. They weren't um, with meeting with counselors yet at that time. You know, that was in January that that um, we started to do that. And so it's, it's looked a lot different. Um, I'm gonna kind of show you guys a little bit of the history of the program. I know we have some new Rotarians um, that uh, joined the club over the last year. And so it's really nice to kind of put the history of the scholarship fund in perspective. And then kind of show everybody um, what the work looks like today. So here's just a little bit of history for the new Rotarians and for maybe those who just didn't know. Um, but the we have been awarding scholarships for a long, long time. And the proceeds of those scholarships have come from our annual car show. So they have changed over time. We've always worked in partnership with Pacific University, but the intent of the scholarships has always been to help pay tuition for local students to attain a higher education. Um, going forward here. So when the car show first started, they would take half of the net income from the car show and that half was distributed as scholarships and the other half had always been used for youth sports and activities. I like to put that in perspective. Obviously we all know this year and last year is out of the norm, but the car show is just a huge, um, it's a really big deal that we can raise that money and host that car show to be able to provide funds for so many great programs. Um, when we look at the funds that come in from scholarships, the money historically had been 60% was donated to Pacific. And that was awarded for students attending Pacific University. 40% of the proceeds were then awarded to, um, were held at the club to be awarded out to students not attending Pacific University. So that's changed a little bit. Um, we go to the next slide. Now we flip those percentages to where 40% go to Pacific University and 60 to non-Pacific University. And that's where it stands today. So when we talk about local students, um, we allow students who live in the Forest Grove, Gaston, and Banks School District to apply for the scholarship. Um, that includes then students who might be attending a private high school or are being homeschooled, but as long as they reside within these school district boundaries, they can apply for the scholarship. The reason we've been specific in stating that is obviously there are Rotary Clubs all over Washington County and many of them offer scholarship programs as well. So we've always focused on students who are here locally. Um, we always like to recognize people we have partnered with and one organization that we have partnered with in the past has been the Forest Grove Knights of Pythias. And if we look at scholarship monies that we have issued out over the years, um, we're going to see that that amount has varied significantly over time, um, but some of those funds have been just because the, the car show, obviously, um, what we bring in from that changes, but also the Knights of Pythias had in the past 
low, um, donated several thousands of dollars to, um, for scholarships. And it's just been in the last couple of years as their organization has changed um, that, that those contributions have, been, um, have not been received. But we like to honor them as partnering with us for many, many years and helping provide scholarships in the past. So another little piece of history is that in 2017, our Rotary Club started an endowment with Pacific University. And that began with its um, donation of 25,000. And the purpose of that endowment is to be able to have a perpetual scholarship um, at Pacific University for, for students who are attending there, obviously from Forest Grove Banks and Gaston. The thought process behind that was really when we looked to the 40% going to Pacific and the 60% going to non-Pacific, we were finding that there was a disproportionate amount of applicants going other places besides Pacific University. And we weren't awarding out all of the funds that we had um, donated toward Pacific. And so what we do is we um, award um, scholarships um, based off of merit and any excess funds rolls into the endowment. And I think this is really exciting because at some point the endowment fund will be able to provide scholarships of its own um, to Pacific University um, students. So it's, it's gonna be a great thing in the future. Um, a little bit more information about that. So um, the club runs on a fiscal year that runs um, June through July, right? Yeah. And um, I'm sorry, July 1st to June 30th, maybe. Um, I'm looking at my notes here. But the contribution made for the previous fiscal year, so the year that we had the Concor, right? We had a great contribution to that, that endowment. But because obviously the pandemic and because there's no Concor in July of 2020, then we haven't made a contribution for this fiscal year, which ends June 30th. Um, the endowment fund is now at 32,000 and a little bit over, which is great. And that payout ratio in the future, um, we could utilize 4% of that to be able to um, issue out scholarships in the future. Now we're just letting that bucket grow. And so that's gonna become a bigger and bigger portion um, that we can use in the future. So I think, um, Going forward here is information about uh, the current scholarships. So for 2021's um, awards, we had a total of 14 applications and this was way down from previous years. For example, last year we had 30 applications. And so I spoke with teachers and counselors um, we didn't do much different, but um, the feedback we got was, you know, these students hadn't been in the school um, meeting with counselors and teachers for quite a long time. And there was a lack of engagement, they felt like, just like, you know, um, hard to, um, motivate and keep track of and kind of pin down, um, you know, kids. And so our, our applications were way down. Um, eight of the applicants were from Forest Grove, five from Banks, just one from Gaston. And in fact, of those 14, none of them are planning on attending Pacific University this year. So we have a total of eight scholarships that we awarded out of the 14 applications. And they range from $500 to $2,000. Uh, the $500 award um, went towards someone who's going to communicate community college. And so that was um, kind of relative to the cost of the education there. And then the other ones were above that. So we were able to award out $12,000 of scholarships to local students. And I just think um, when we consider what this year has looked like and the challenges, that's pretty incredible. 
The funds from this year's scholarships were provided by the rainy day funds of our um, club. And so really grateful that they um, were willing to um, provide some of those monies and still help provide scholarships to the local students. This is kind of a nice little graph. Um, I have been taking um, notes on, you know, where, how many scholarships we've had in the past and where these applications have come from. And so we can see, and this shows obviously in pictorial view, um, how the, you know, applications have changed over time. I am really hopeful that as we enter into, as Dave Parker mentioned, a, a more normal school year, that we'll see those applications pop right back up for next year, 2022. So um, a few differences this year, we did pull back our scholarship due date to a little bit earlier in April. We are working to partner with Pacific to um, align with their timeline and announcing scholarships a little more closely. This is also the first year that the entire application was online. Um, and so this had some benefits as well as some learning opportunities, obviously. Um, we found most scholarships actually this year shifted <laughs> to being online scholarships. And so with students um, not being physically at the school for much of the year, this was a, a change that I think um, really needed to be made. And obviously um, the last point, which I already mentioned because there's no Concord and it is the source of our Pacific or of our scholarships um, that we were able to utilize some saved funds and still issue out additional scholarships. Um, when we think about the Pacific bucket um, and um, referencing a previous slide, we had provided um, $12,962 in previous fiscal year and we had awarded 8,000 of that out last year. So rather than rolling the 4,962 into the endowment, we held it in reserve. And then the board approved some additional funds. And so for next year, we, we will have $8,000 still at Pacific to be issued out to current scholarships. And then, um, you know, we're, we are working on raising funds obviously in other ways like the stake cells and that sort of thing. Um, to, um, you know, provide scholarships next year. So one more slide, here are our winners. So everyone can kind of scroll through that, see if they recognize any of those kids on there. Um, usually, and hopefully we'll be able to do this next year in 2022, the recipients of the scholarships are invited to our lunch and get to stand up and say, hey, this is where I'm planning to go to um, college. And this is what I'd like to study. When we look through here and see the kids and where they're planning to attend, um, RJ um, is gonna go to Duke, um, Elizabeth, Lewis and Clark, Kaylin, University of Oregon, Emily, University of Oregon, Amanda is gonna go to PCC. We've got Cade and Lilia going to Oregon State and Camilla going to Portland State. And they are aspiring to do some pretty amazing things. As you guys can see, we've got physicians and lawyers and nurses, um, a forester in there. And it's just really neat to um, be able to see these great kids, see what they're working towards and be able to support them as they move to that next phase. So those are our winners. Um, if you guys know any of those kids or run into them, um, congratulate them. It's a pretty um, great um, you know, opportunity for them and it's exciting to be able to provide that scholarship. So, and with that, um, I would pivot to going over any questions. I saw one in the chat, but um, I saw it come and leave real quickly. Um, and so I think it was from Janine, um, if there was any questions that people might have about the scholarships this year, 
and what that looked like. Let me see if I can look at this chat here. I've got it. Um, how many Pacific students received Rotary scholarships in the last year? So um, $8,000 was the, um, we issued out four $2,000 scholarships last year. And um, because there was no applicants this year, we held those money in reserve, believing that our um, scholarships will be back up to kind of the norm, closer to 30 applications or so in years to come, so. Sharon, this is Janine. I just was curious, you don't really do the application for the Pacific students. Pacific gives the money out, right? So the way that works, that's a great question, is we do, um, we review all of the applications and we separate out those going to Pacific University and those going to non-Pacific University because those awards come from two different buckets of money. We make the decisions on the non-Pacific University applications. And then we provide a formal recommendation for those to receive Pacific University and for that to Pacific, um, to um, acknowledge or um, adjust essentially the awards um, because we are able to see essentially the applications of all persons and our thought process has always been to make awards that um, are similar regardless of where a student is attending. And so if we know we've made the top award is $2,000 for these four students and we see these specific students, we make recommendations that awards of this amount be, be given to these students and the Pacific either says, yeah, that's great. Or they, or they um, ask otherwise, they've never not gone with our recommendation. It's kind of a formality. I'd like to compliment you and Rotary on, on continuing to do such great work. Uh, uh, I've been serving as a chair of another organization, Scholarship Committee, for the last 15 <laughs> years. And you are working under some very difficult circumstances. Uh, we, too, had a huge drop in applications. Mm -hmm. uh, we went from 30 finalists last year to nine this year. And, and we just awarded scholarships to eight of those nine students. So you're doing great work and it's not uncommon right now. Uh, things will change and uh, hopefully when everything gets back to normal and we raise money again and the students are back in school, we'll all be able to help even more. But congratulations on doing a good job in a really difficult time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hart, 